Hey guys, Derek from Bomb Socks with more Bomb Bites, where we feast upon the words of Christ, one bite at a time. One of my favorite stories in the Old Testament is found in chapter 5 of 2 Kings, and it's about this guy right here. His name is Naaman, or Naaman, depending upon where you're from. He is a wonderful man of valor. He's a captain of the Syrian armies. Uh, in fact, you go to chapter 5, verse number 1, captain of the host of Syria, great man with his master, honorable, and because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was a mighty man of valor. Oh, and there's one little thing, but he was a leper. Okay. Now again, leprosy, that horrible skin disease, it affects you physically. It affects you socially, mentally, all of those things. And there's a great video that the Come Follow Me actually has this week. I'd recommend watching it. It's a little bit longer for one of these episodes, but I love it. I think it's so well done as it goes through these about these first 15 verses or so of chapter 5. But you go to verse number 2. It says, The Syrians had gone out by companies, had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid. And she waited on Naaman's wife. This young woman is a hero in this story. And she said unto her mistress, Would God my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. So here's this bright young Israelite girl who's like, so he's got leprosy. There's a prophet in Samaria and he is able to recover him from his leprosy. So Naaman goes to be able to meet the prophet Elisha. So it says in verse number nine, so Naaman came with his horses, with his chariot, stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And verse 10 is a cool verse. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him saying, go and wash in Jordan seven times and thy flesh shall come again to thee and thou shalt be clean. So he sends a messenger. Verse 11, but Naaman was wroth and he went away and he said, behold, I thought he will surely come out to me and stand and call upon the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. He's like, why didn't he do that? Why did he send a messenger my way? Verse 12, and kind of a bonus here, are not Abana and Farpar, that are rivers in Damascus, are they better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in rage. So I can just see him. And again, the video that they have portrays this as well. The River Jordan's a dirty, dirty river. And he's like, those other rivers, couldn't I go wash in those? And so he's sitting there saying, why didn't a prophet come out and tell me this? Why does he want me to do this very, very difficult thing? So you've got his frustration is this. Why didn't the prophet himself come out and tell me about this? Why is he asking me to do something that in my mind does not make a lot of sense? Verse 13, it says, His servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, or like my, you know, my lord, my master, if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? How much rather than when he saith unto thee, wash and be clean. It's like, look, if this prophet would have said, go do some great thing, then surely you would have done it. And all he said is go wash in the Jordan seven times and you'll be clean. That seems like a no brainer. There's so many times we, as members of the church, I, I've often asked my students this, I'll say, how many of you would take a bullet for the prophet? And they're like, yes, I would totally do that. I want to go out in a blaze of glory defending the prophet. So what if he asks you to read your scriptures every day? And you're just like, yeah, sorry, that's just not as big as I thought it would be. Most of us will not be those great defenders. No, most of us are just going to do the simple, small things. And those will be the things that will save us. It's not the great big, hey, I want you to pack up your family and move a thousand miles away. The Lord probably is not going to do that for most of us. He's going to ask us to do small and simple things. Well, verse 14, it says, Then he went down, he dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Verse 15, And he returned to the man of God, he and all of his company, and came and stood before him, and he said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. And I love that. All of a sudden, Naaman has a testimony about Elisha as being a prophet of God. Well, a couple questions I want to throw at you here just as you're thinking about this story. So why do you think the Lord asked Naaman to wash in the dirtiest river in Israel? Again, sometimes 
we will get commanded to do things that we don't always understand and our mind does not make sense. Why didn't Elisha himself ever come out to meet Naaman? That's a little thing you can think about or talk about as a family. Why seven times? What if he had stopped at six? I remember reading an article about, uh, you know, are we are we six dip saints? Are we ones who will tap out at five or six because we're not seeing the results of this. I know in the video that it shows, uh, it shows Naaman, yeah, after the first try, he looks at his skin. He's like, has it worked yet? And every single time he just keeps looking to see. Oftentimes we do that. What would have happened if the Israelite girl, this is a great, great question, had not spoken up about a prophet in Israel. Like if she had just kept quiet, would Naaman had ever had an opportunity to get healed of his leprosy? Well, one of the things it says in the Come Follow Me for this week, which I really love this statement. It says, if I am humble and obedient, Jesus Christ can heal me. Sometimes it's easier to find personal meaning in the scriptures when you compare physical things in a story with spiritual things. For example, while reading 2 Kings 5, which is what we just did, you might compare Naaman's leprosy with the spiritual challenge you are facing. Like Naaman, perhaps you have hoped that the Lord would do some great thing to help you. What does Naaman's experience teach you? In your life, what would be the equivalent of following the simple counsel to wash and be clean? Note how Naaman's experience affected his faith in the God of Israel. What experiences have strengthened your faith in God? So this story is a great story. It gives a lot of wonderful principles for us to follow, and I'm grateful for it. And it helps me want to obey the Lord even more as I read this wonderful story. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And thanks so much for sharing. We appreciate that you do that. Please go check out our amazingly awesome, comfortable gospel theme socks at bombsocks.com. And you guys have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Godspeed. Bye-bye.